it's real, 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 real. Oh, oh yeah, look at him go. You know, we're thinking, you know, it'd be nice to catch a tarpon, but honestly, at the end of the day, it was definitely not about catching fish. It was more about, you know, getting to know some world-class individuals and letting Turner get to know these guys on a different level. Dr. Brian, of course, who, who we already have a relationship with, but Stephen Holcomb, an Olympic champion and world champion, that's incredible. Oh, there you go, yeah. nice! Woo. That's awesome! Yeah! Woo. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Hey guys. Hey guys. Right. I want you to meet Stephen Holcomb, right. Olympic bobsled champion. And this is Dr. Brian Boxer Walkler. He's Pleasure the one you. that did the surgery on Turner for right. Keratoconus. Awesome. Hey, Dr. Brian, right. it's good to see you yeah, again. You too. See yeah. you. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Pleasure. I think we, uh, what do we got? A little mullet? Maybe try a little tarpon fishing? Yeah, tarpon, sharks, barracudas, whatever. I mean, you guys got anything particular you want to try to catch? Or? Sharks. Be cool. All right, good. All right, Jaws Jr., maybe? All right. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's we got, see if we, we can we're, bend we're the rod a little bit. Well, let's go. After you. That meant a lot to me to, to get those particular people together on the boat. You know, as, as you know, Turner was diagnosed with this condition called keratoconus, and it is something that the doctor will tell you, well, this is the kind of what you're looking at. It may take the whole lifetime to, to degrade the vision, or it may take a short time. We just don't know much about this disease. So with Turner, it went downhill very quickly. And I started looking around like, man, there's got to be something we can do about this. So this was, his vision was going so bad, he, he would eventually go blind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the way that this has been treated in the past is with a cornea transplant. You know, there's all kinds of troubles with something like that. He's gonna, he would be on anti-rejection drugs for the rest of his life, and that, that's not even a very high success rate. So I use technology, Google, and I'm starting to look around and find different things, and this one name keeps coming up, Dr. Brian Boxer Walkler. And so I start looking into this, and then another name starts coming up, Stephen Holcomb. And Stephen Holcomb is an Olympic bobsled gold medalist. And he had this disease, and it almost cost him his career. He finds someone who puts him in touch with Dr. Brian Boxer Walkler, who has pioneered a new procedure, which is non-invasive. And it was so successful with Stephen to stop keratoconus completely, and then to restore his sight with other methods. Dr. Brian named this procedure the Holcomb C3R, so now it always has his name attached to it. And after that, Stephen Holcomb went on to have amazing success, including an Olympic gold medal. So when we go out there in Beverly Hills, California, to get this procedure, the procedure went great. And Brian, you know, spent a lot of time with us. And his time is super valuable, and he's got patients stacked up coming in from around the world. But he managed to come in there, answer all the questions we had. And I really liked the guy. Right away, I was like, man, this is the guy. So after the procedure, we go in for the next day to follow up and another, another time to follow up. And I started talking to Brian, and I was like, you know, I read the way I found you is I read Stephen Holcomb's book. And this is what I do for a living. And here's an idea. Wouldn't it be cool if we could get you and Stephen Holcomb and Turner to come down and fish? And Brian said, you know, that sounds fun. And next thing you know, we make it happen. Pretty much. Might be getting a bite, getting a bite. Real, 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 real. Come on, Steven. Look at me. Set the hook. It's your card. There you go. Okay, let's everybody reel in and get back to a safe spot and get your get back there. We're going. Tip eye. Okay, we're gonna go back to the back. Pull up. Here, I'll get that I don't think clear. we're gonna chase this one. Well, it was cool, man. It was neat to, you know, I'd heard a little bit about these guys and, you know, certainly get a chance to go fishing with them. Uh, I mean, it was a little choppy, um, but, but we had these interesting tides. I told you the first thing that morning, I was like, hey, man, we got these, you know, kind of weak tides that are good for dead baiting. And 
I love it with clients that, that don't fish a lot because there's going to be action. Mm -hmm. You put a dead mullet on the bottom near those bridges, it's going to be a tarpon, right. shark, something's going to bite the thing. Yep. Snapper, grouper, all that where when the live mullet, you know, there's a few less species that'll hit that. So, um, so it worked out good. We got a, um, put out a live bait and threw out a couple dead ones on the bottom and it did not take long. This is also my job. Keep your hands away from something with teeth. <laughs> All right. Steven needs his hands too. I do. But I can pretty confidently say whatever it is is the biggest thing you've ever caught before. Probably. Good. Not something like that. Okay, we're gonna have a nurse shark here, I think. And he might go under the bow, so if he does, just remember yep. what I said about going around that way. Steven's never caught a shark. Stephen um, has never fished in the Florida Keys, so anything that bends the rod is amazing, and I don't think that he expected that that, that anything he caught was going to be as big as him. <laughs> but, you know, uh, there are a lot of big creatures over there. Wow. Yeah, so this is a nurse shark, and the nurse shark is, uh, uh, let's see, Jeez, he's probably the, uh, okay, bring your tip over here a little bit. That's a All big right. one. You wanted to catch a shark? There well it is. Done. There it is. Let's see if we can get a decent look. Now hold on to that rod because I've yep, I got he it. might not. Okay. There you go. Was nice. Good. Perfect release right there. Yep. I'd he say was he right was close the... to your weight class there. That was a big <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, Okay, cow. you can go home. You have to catch your weight. So you can go home now. You got some work to do. Good job. That was awesome. Nice. Are you feeling a little uh Yeah, that was yeah. that thing is strong. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> You know, we're thinking, you know, it'd be nice to catch a tarpon, but honestly, bend the rod, you know, bend the rod and let's let's show these guys a great experience because at, at the end of the day, it was definitely not about catching fish. It was more about, you know, getting to know some world-class individuals and uh, just having a fun day and letting Turner get to know these guys on a different level. Um, you know, Dr. Brian, of course, who, who we already have a relationship with, but get to know and hang out with Stephen Holcomb, Olympic champion and world champion. That's incredible. So I was so impressed. Right, right as we were leaving the dock, Dr. Brian started asking me questions, you know, and they were like legit questions. And, you know, you could tell his mind. He was trying to piece together what, you know, what his role was and, and what he could do. And, you know, he was intent on everything he was doing. He was figuring it out. You could just see his mind working. And sure enough, when, when, when the time came and, and he got that bite, the first bite on that tarpon, I see that rod go down. He did exactly what he was supposed to do, real tight, had a bend in the rod, comes tight, and next thing you know, we're off to the races chasing a big tarpon. All right, let's throw it. Okay, Brian, we're gonna come up here to the bow. Hold on, boys. Okay, we're going right to the cooler. Yep, yep, left, yep, right through here. Tip low. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, real hard and fast, tip low. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Real hard and fast, hard and fast, hard and fast. Around the belt, tip low. Okay, real, 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 real. Okay, good, 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 we're clear. Yep, hold on. Okay, real, 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 real. Okay, good, 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 right, yes. Dr. Woo. As that first one hit and we ran it through the bridge, I mean, this was what I was so impressed with. He got up there, I mean, this was, it was rough. We had to go quickly um, as we ran through the bridge. I mean, it's, it's a sketchy situation for yeah. anyone. He did great, got through there, got into the clear. Um, awesome, I remember that tarpon came up and jumped out of the water right when they were clear from the bridge. Right. The there you there. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. All right, the next time that he does that, Turn he's coming. Turn around, I want to stand back here a little bit. Real, 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 real. He's just coming at you, he's okay. just coming at you. Oh, he came off, sorry. That's all right, good all job. Right. And uh, finally spit the hook, um, but man, that was a beautiful fish, big tarpon, and, and hit, when he saw that big one jump, you know, you could see him, he's like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> that was, was exciting. Was that cool or what? Did you get a good look at him jumping yeah. there? Yeah. That was a big boy, wasn't it? So back to the anchor we go, and we're there, we get all the baits out, and everybody's kind of waiting to see what, what who, who's Waiting to see who's one. next, yeah. Right. And uh, man, Dr. Tarpon strikes again. He had the hot hand. I don't know uh, what it was, but he had the hot hand. It's real, 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 real. Oh, Stay there for a second. He 
Keep your tip low, keep reeling. There you go. You got it, you got it. Hey, this one's not getting away. Go. Yeah, you got it. Hey, buddy. Straight through. Straight through here. You're not getting away. Oh, there you go, yeah. nice! Woo. That's awesome! Yeah! Woo. That's a real one right there! I see that thing come up and jump, and it takes off, and it goes right on through the bridge, and the way the wind's blowing from the south, south or southerly direction, man, that ocean side is really, really rough. The other side is a little bit calmer where we were sitting, so you get out there, and now we're fighting this fish through all the bridge, Everything is, is happening, it takes a good team. Put a little drag on him, get him. And reel down, just reel and drop the rod, and then pull low into the sun. He's Which going side? right here. Which You're good, Chuck. One good spot right he there. can't go is in that field goal. He hasn't gone through yet. All right, work him Pull, heavier pull on the drag. Side. Well, that fish was interesting. We hooked it on the bay side. It went through the ocean side while we were fighting it. Back to the bay side. He made it. Oh, yeah, look at him go. Back through the ocean side, we went about a mile offshore chasing it. Rough, 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 rough. And he's a pro, huh? Man. <laughs> Look at that. You were close. Nice you. Nice you. You're making him work. That's good. Then, as the tide switched, he started working his way back another half mile, mile to the bridge. There he is. Super Coming fresh. Up, right here. It's going to work right here. Tip low. You got to go under the bow. Under the bow. Under the bow. Out around. Out around. Out around. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Great move. Nice job. Nice. Dr. Tarpin. Wow. 45 minutes or more of a fight. It looked like everything was clear. The fish was right at the boat. He was just yeah, surfing the right there. On. You got the leader. He's right there next to the boat. It's calm. We're, we're drifting away from the bridge. Everything seemed peaceful. We're like, all right, whew, man, this is good. And then for no apparent reason, doop, Yep. It just chafed through the leader. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and yeah. we get the fish and honk. All right. Oh. Well, technically, we caught him. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to the river. Just like, just like we had talked about before, it's just a, it's just a t ticking time bomb. He oh, just goes through there. Right through, yeah. And that's one of the big challenges with the tarpon. That tarpins. was almost an hour. That was an, an hour? hour. That, was an hour. <laughs> that was a big one. OK, I'm sitting down. Please do. <laughs> We're done for a week. I'm an eye surgeon specializing in a condition called keratoconus. And keratoconus is where the cornea, which is like the outer lens or windshield of the eye, is weak and it bulges out. And it causes a tremendous amount of distortions of vision, such as double vision, multiple images. And so the way I think of it is it can literally rob somebody of the ability to lead a normal life. Stephen Holcomb came to me when he virtually retired from the sport of bobsled, which is a sport that he loved. He always wanted to win an Olympic gold medal as a kid. And because he had keratoconus, his vision was declining to the point where he couldn't even see and was driving by feel. And he eventually made a decision that he was gonna retire because he didn't want to put his teammates at risk. And his team doctor did lots of research and everybody said he needed to have a cornea transplant. And that would have put him out of the sport because of the long recovery and also the fragile nature of the transplant. So when they eventually found out what I was doing, a procedure at the time called C3R, it was non-invasive. We could strengthen the cornea and prevent people from needing cornea transplants. That was a very revolutionary procedure and, and still is. And I treated him with that procedure and then followed it up with lens implants to correct his vision. and. Later, after he won the Olympic gold medal at the Vancouver Olympics, which was just so exciting because I was there with my family rooting for him. Afterwards, I named the procedure in his honor, Holcomb C3R. I was diagnosed with keratoconus in 2001. And when I was first diagnosed, they told me that, uh, you know, don't worry, by the time your vision is going to slowly degrade, and by the time, you, you know, it really gets bad, they'll probably have some cure. And if not, you just get a cornea transplant, no big deal. Um, well, in about six years, my vision went from 2030 to 21,000, and which is pretty incredible. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face, and it was, you know, trying to drive a bobsled at 90 miles an hour, pulling 5 Gs. It's not exactly safe. 
So I told my coach, yeah, I think I have to retire. And he's like, well, why? I said, well, my vision is deteriorating. I can't see it. He's like, what do you mean? I actually, you know, I kept this whole vision problem a secret for a long time. I didn't actually tell people I had an issue. They knew I had a, my vision wasn't great. And I was very good at getting away with not um, showing that I had no vision. Eventually, it just got to a point I could no longer hide it. And it was just going to, it was just too much. And I finally, you know, I was kind of spiraling into a depression and it really started to show and that's kind of when it all came out and said like I have to retire. So there's a former bobsledder, his name is Scott Stoll, who's a medical doctor and he's kind of always on the, the leading edge of technology and how technology can help uh, these new things coming out and we asked him like hey is there anything for this eye disease? And he's like well I'm not really sure but let me ask around, let me ask my colleagues and whatnot, see if there's anything that's that's special, that's new for keratoconus. And that's when he's like, hey, there's a doctor in Beverly Hills that's got this new procedure called C3R. And I was like, well, you know, I really have nothing to lose if I go out there and see him and it doesn't work, I'm, you know, I'm right where I am anyway. And if it does work, hey, I'm back in the game. So I went out to Beverly Hills, saw Dr. Boxer Walkler, and within a few, uh, few months, my vision had been restored from 21,000 to 2020. So basically it's a two-part procedure. At the end of 2007, I had the first part done because it was very, this, the C3R is not uh, invasive and you could have it done, you're up and at it right after. The second part is what's called the Vizian ICL, which is basically an insertable contact lens that they implanted behind my iris. And uh, that's what brought my vision from 21,000 to 2020. So that was after the season, uh, March of 2008. Um, a year almost to the day after the, the first, uh, the second procedure of the ICL, we won our first world championship in 50 years. Almost two years to the day is when we won the Olymp first Olympic gold medal in 62 years. And since then, I've become a five-time world champion, uh, three-time Olympic medalist, including one gold. Uh, we have 10 world championship medals, 14 World Cup overall titles, and over 60 World Cup medals. So it's been pretty amazing since. That's a nice one, whoa! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. <sighs> Way to nice go, job. Steven! Yeah. Boy, he is hooked weird. See how it's like lassoed? Oh, yeah. This is really weird. He's in this funny spot. Hold on, let me get a better grip on him before. Yeah, with those teeth before in there. take a look at him. All right, now we're good. So, this guy has some amazing teeth in there. I think he would open his mouth. Yeah. Look at those teeth. Oh, wow. Gosh. Yeah. All right, Doc, keep your hands way away from that guy. I had never been to the Florida Keys for fishing. This was really, truly an adventure. And it was just so fun to be out there and just not think about anything else but just what we're doing, which is just fishing. And the concentration that's involved and the whole process and having the whole team be with me and Steven was, was just, it was, it was really an honor uh, and pleasure to be a part of that process. All right, look up at me, boys. Big smile. Pull up a little higher, Tom. There it is. Yeah! Nice job, boys. You know, I really thought it was cool to get Turner, Dr. Tarpon, Steven, all there, you know, guys from all over, different backgrounds, different places in the world, all coming together, you know, with one common thing, and take them out fishing. That was yeah. cool. It was, and being able to give Turner the opportunity to have the procedure from Dr. Bryan, and then, you know, to extend that again and give him the opportunity to meet Steven and get to talk to him about something that only those two guys know about. Like, you don't know about it, I don't know about it. Even Brian doesn't have keratoconus. He helps a lot of people, but he's not the guy that is faced with, wow, this is not looking good. So to get Turner to be able to spend a little time with Steven is one of, if not the best day of fishing I've ever had. Can I aim him out this way a little bit? He's tired, but he's ready. He's about ready. All right, we'll say bye to him, huh? See you later, buddy. Nice. Good job. Yeah. That's fun. Woohoo! Now the pressure's really on, Turner. <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, A C O B C. Uh, M V D. 
Turner's going to throw a mullet or two out here, and these guys come in here, like that guy right there, comes in here to uh, to eat. Put it, put it right out there. And here he comes. Oh, that was so awesome. 